Today we're going to be looking at a couple more optimization problems. This is probably the hardest one, but most common one that you'll find. Uh, this question is interesting because there is a study on dogs that apparently, because of this question, we can prove that dogs know calculus. But, of course, this is an absurd claim because dogs simply cannot know calculus. They are just inherently wired to optimize this sort of situation. So, we have a man sailing his, po his boat from point A on a bank of a straight river. So, of course, let's draw a picture here. It's a straight river. And he's at some point A. And the river is three kilometers wide. So, this will be three kilometers. And he wants to reach point B eight kilometers downstream on the opposite side of the river as quickly as possible. So, there's some point here, B, and its distance is eight kilometers. So here's some other information. He can sail at six kilometers per hour. So he can cross the stream directly across at six kilometers per hour, and he can run at eight kilometers per hour. So where should he land to minimize the amount of time it takes to get to point B? So what we're doing is we want to draw a nice little path to some point, let's call this point D, where his sailing and running are optimized so that way he gets to be as fast as possible. So I'm going to label one more point, and there are going to be two situations here. First of all, what we're going to have is if we go from A to C, what we're doing is we're doing a ton of swimming and a ton of running, but its sailing is going to be the fastest it can possibly be, since it has the shortest amount of time sailing. And in our other situation, A to B, there's going to be no running whatsoever, and he's going to sail the whole way. So we probably want some point in between. So let's write out some information here. First of all, the distance from C to D here this is what we're trying to find, which is going to be the perfect amount of distance to land, and we're going to call this x. So by that, the distance from d to b is going to be 8 minus x, since we have whatever is left of 8 after doing x. So this distance here will be 8 minus x. Okay, in fact, we should probably fill out this triangle a little bit more. So we know that the river is going to be three long, and we don't know quite how far he's going to land on that side, so we'll call that x, which means that our hypotenuse here is going to be 9 plus x squared. So if I write this down in points, that'll be a, that'll be the point c that I labeled, and this here will be the point d, and down further will be the point b. Okay, so here's another thing. The reason why I'm going through this one with you is that there's a lot of information to take in here. So we have two different time functions. And if you remember, time is going to be distance divided by the rate. So we want to minimize time. So we have two different things here. We have, which I'm going to call this um, time of rowing or sailing, is going to be well, this will be 9 plus x squared, because this line right here is the amount of time we'll, we will be taking sailing. And of course, this is dependent on x, so it can either be sailing the whole way or sailing just across at the least amount of time we can cross. So this will be that over the distance, or sorry, the rate, and he can sail at 6 kilometers an hour. And of course, we have the t of running and he has to run 8 minus x kilometers, and he can do that at 8 kilometers per hour. So the total time is going to end up being both of these added together. So we have 9 plus x squared divided by 6 plus 8 minus x all divided by 8. And now we have a time function. So, of course, when we have our time function, what do we have to do to minimize it? We have to take its derivative. So after this, and after a bunch of simplification, we're going to end up with 6 divided by, 
or sorry, x divided by 6 times the square root of x squared plus 9 minus 1 eighth. So we need to solve this for 0. So when we do this, and I'm going to skip a ton of steps here because I don't think it's necessary to show you how to solve for 0. You should know how to do this by now. We will get x is equal to 9 divided by the square root of 7. So yeah, it's a little bit of a crazy number, but that means that when he sails across the river, he should, when he's finished the sailing, he should be down from C, 9 over the square root of 7 kilometers. And then he can run the rest of the way. And that will minimize the amount of time it takes for him to get to point B. So what we should do is we should check out, well, okay, we should consider the case where he sails straight across and runs the whole way. We should consider the case where he does no running at all. And we should consider this case that is supposedly the minimum amount of time. So let's just plug in some values here. If we have t is equal to zero. Of course, uh, the t that I'm working with is this function right here. I'm just plugging zero into that. We put a zero in there, we get 1.5. If we plug eight into the equation, we're going to get 1.42. So it is faster to sail across the whole way and not do any running than it is just to sail across the three kilometers and run to be, which of course by Pythagoras that should make sense. But if we put in our new value, 9 over the square root of 7, we get approximately 1.33, which means it's even faster to sail down 9 over the root of 7 kilometers and then run the rest of the way. So. Fun fact, if you're at a beach and you throw a ball into the water at an angle, a dog will do this. He will not do any, of course, physical calculations of writing stuff down on paper and then start running and find the optimal spot. But if you were to solve this problem, take your dog to the beach, throw it into the water, you would see that he would actually fit with this stuff. He would do this, except just completely mentally. And in real life, yeah, you're probably going to get a good estimation of this uh, just off of your intuition and your really quick mental thought processes. Unfortunately, in an exam, they're looking for an exact numerical answer. So, unfortunately, intuition will not save you there. So, I'm going to do a practice problem with you guys. And we're going to say, if 1,200 square centimeters of materials available to make a box with a square base and an open top, find the largest possible volume of the box. So if you want to try it from scratch, pause the video now, go try it. Um, if not, I'll give you a couple hints right now. So hint number one, your surface area is going to have the formula of x squared, which will be your base, x by x. In fact, if I write, uh, if I draw a nice box here, so we have a box, the base will be x times x, and we'll have some height h. So our surface area will be x squared, plus we have four sides with base x times height, and our volume is going to be x cubed. Sorry, not x cubed, x squared times h, since the box does not have to be a cube. It can have different dimensions on its height from space. So, okay, now pause the video, try this, and if you can get it, awesome. If not, I'll come back and explain it in a second. All right, so this one shouldn't be too bad, especially at this point. Uh, what we want to do is we want to maximize the volume. So we need to solve for h in our surface area. And one thing I forgot to mention is that the surface area is going to be equal to 1200. So we can solve for h here. We know that h is going to be equal to 1200 minus x squared all divided by 4 times x, which we can simplify further and write this as 300 over x minus x over 4. So we have our height here and now we're going to plug it back into our volume equation 
because this is what we're maximizing. So we're going to have x squared times 300 over x minus x divided by 4, which we can expand that. So we're going to get 300x minus x cubed over 4. So at this point, we should take its derivative so we can maximize it. So we're going to get 300 minus 3x squared divided by 4. What we should do now is we should solve 4x by setting v prime to equal 0. So we're going to get 3x squared divided by 4 is equal to 300. So we have 3x squared is equal to 1200. So here we have x squared is equal to 400. So x is going to be plus or minus 20, but of course we cannot have a negative dimension in a box. So x is going to be 20, which if we plug back into our surface area function, we will find that this implies that h is going to be equal to 10. So what is the volume of our big box? Our volume is going to be 20 squared times 10, which will be 4,000 centimeters cubed. And if we pick, uh, let's say, let's try if x is equal to 19. So we're going to have 19 squared times, well then we need to figure out what x is equal when it's 19. So it's going to be some number slightly greater than 10 for h and this is going to be a little bit less than 4,000. So if we pick an x less than 20, it'll be less than 4,000. And if we pick an x that's greater than 20, we're still going to get an answer less than 4,000. So we know that to optimize this box, uh, x is equal to 20, h is equal to 10 is going to give us our best bet. And of course, you can check if x is 0, and what if h is 0, then what happens? Well, then the volume is, is 0. So, there you go. There's optimization problems. These are pretty much the only ones you're ever going to get. Some of the harder ones, I definitely urge you to do on your own. If there's any of them that you just cannot get, please leave it in the comments, and I will do my best to explain it, or at least give you hints to get started on it. So, that was optimization. Next time we do something completely different because it is now into these sections of the course that are optional between different universities. So we're going to start getting into parametric curves, polar curves, Newton's method, L'Hopital's rule, antiderivatives, and I think a couple other things. So that stuff will start next video.